Can't be long. Hello, can you just wait in the car park because I'm I'm being put on camera. <laughs> yeah, they're doing an interview thing and they want me to do it. So I've told the nurse you'd be in the car park, but I'll be out as soon as they finish this. All right, tell the kids to be good. Bye. We worked with um, Spire previously. Um, so once this all, all broke in the UK, we um, joined together to enable us to help some of our patients um, go through with their surgeries, uh, most, mostly urgent and cancer patients. Um, we've always worked really closely with them because a lot of their consultants do their private practice at the hospital and um, in times when they've needed some help with the waiting list uh, work, sending us some of their patients, we've worked really well with them and so there's a tried and tested um, process really and we knew the teams and we knew the, we knew the, cons the consultant in charge, Jeremy Livingston and Jan and the team in uh, West Hart. So for us it was a natural segue into um, you know, taking on these patients for West Hart. So I, I've worked at the Spine Hospital for over 20 years, so I know them very well and they know me pretty well. Um, and it was an obvious place to go, so we started talking with, uh, with colleagues at Spire even before the directive came along. Uh, so in fact, when, when the official directives came along, we were one step ahead. In fact, I think we already had our first sessions planned. Perfectly healthy until I lost three stone in three months, and I went to see a doctor. They ran some blood tests and sent me for a scan and found that one of my my left hand kidney had a tumour the size of the kidney, which meant it had to come out with the kidney. And my right kidney got a stone on top of it and a dangerous cyst on the bottom. And I had the left kidney out just before coronavirus came into action. So I had to wait to have the other treatments and um, suddenly got a phone call to say, would I be prepared to come here instead of, because of not going to Watford. So I said, yes. And um, the doctor's taken the stone out and now I'm waiting to go to Lister Hospital where they've got an amazing robot to take the cyst out. Hopefully I'll still have 80% of a kidney when they finished. I don't know, I was too busy worrying about coronavirus because my daughter-in-law's brother died a bit within the first week just before shutdown. And um, yeah, I found it all very scary. And the thought of, um, when I had a problem, a district nurse came to visit me and she said, oh, you need to go to Watford Hospital to have that looked at. And I was like, I don't want to go because they got coronavirus there. So the deal that was done with NHS England and the independent sector was that all of our capacity would be given up to the NHS to help fight the COVID effort because of course we didn't know way back then what, what the volume of patients coming through the hospitals and, and what the dem demand would be and we didn't know whether the NHS would be able to cope um, and of course they have coped absolutely incredibly admirably and we know that the peak hopefully seems to have flattened for the time being. Um, so at that point, when we uh, went into contract with the NHS, we became an NHS funded hospital and at that point all elective surgery and all, uh, pretty much all consultations stopped. So it was a bit of an about face and, a, um, and, a, and a, 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 an interesting time to get your head around the brave new world and lots of stressful millions of Zoom calls. But, um, but actually, yeah, I think we've done amazingly well as a team and we've just adapted and got on with what we do best, which is looking after patients and making sure as many patients as possible could have their really important time critical surgery. This has enabled us to operate on over 100 patients in the last few weeks. Um, it's, so it's been a fantastic partnership with them. You know, we didn't know when we first went live with, you know, being mobilised, we, we didn't know what to expect and we could have been having you know, patients turning up in the middle of the night, being shipped out from Watford to make place for, for, for more patients in the trust. And so uh, everybody was kind of on standby. Everybody got um, just kind of, just got on with it. You know, you, you presented with a, with a set of new challenges. You realise the absolute serious imperative behind what we're doing and, and how actually what we're doing is nothing compared to what the guys at West Hearts are doing, it's nothing. So what we're able to do is get on, get the patients through the door um, and make sure 
patients know that they're not forgotten about and that they do have access to a, you know, a, a COVID-free site for their surgery. I was really relieved that I could get on with it, especially as they don't have any coronavirus patients here at all. And they're great. The team here is really amazing. I mean, I'd never gone private Although it's not private, it's still National Health, but their food's amazing, the nurses come whenever you call them, and yeah, it's a different experience. And first time I've ever been in a room on my own as well, whereas I've been on, on wards before. I think, you know, there's been just one group of patients and one group of staff, and, and everyone's been treated in exactly the same way, and, and the patients have been prioritised because ultimately it's all about the patients. And, you know, every patient we can treat now is one less uh, to deal with at the end of the pandemic. I think it, the collaboration with SPAR has been absolutely phenomenal. We've worked um, very hard together to get where we are. The pathways have changed several times just so that we could incorporate everything that needed to be done for every patient. We've been treating patients with cancers of the bowel and cancers of the kidney and you know if they'd had to wait two, three, four months, um, you know, that's medically bad and psychologically disastrous. So, you know, I'm delighted for every single patient that we've managed to treat. I don't know. I mean, if the, if the cyst is cancerous, I could have been dead in months. I don't know, because I didn't feel any pain, but you don't always feel pain when something in your body is happening, do you? What I hear time and time again from the nurses on the ward is that the patients are so grateful that they're able to come and have their really urgent surgery in an environment that they as I say, felt safe and they feel that they are protected as much as possible from getting COVID and the, and the virus. Um, and they're, and they're, you know, they're really pleased that, that the NHS and the independent sector are working so well together to provide those facilities for, those, for these important and urgent patients.